She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. Right, so hello, my name is Shay Rose. Today I want to talk about having that effortless, gorgeous, healthy, beautiful look. We all want to kind of strive for that effortlessly gorgeous look, right? But sometimes it still requires quite a bit of effort. So today I'm going to show some of the things that I do, some of the things I suggest to help you guys out as well. I also want to say Happy New Year to everyone and thank you so much to anyone who answered my poll, my questionnaire. So I posted this kind of like feedback poll the other day and yeah, I got some amazing answers. So I'm just going to go through all of them in a couple of days, but today I went through some of them, like a little browse, and I've had some amazing answers and really, really great feedback. So thank you so much. I mean, the feedback will definitely help me in this next year to make some great videos. Anyway, these are my tips to have that effortlessly beautiful, naturally healthy, gorgeous glow. I think the first thing that we really need to go into is your colors. Wearing the right colors can really change things. There are certain colors that for certain people, it can make them look radiant, gorgeous. Whereas the same color on another person can make them look a bit more like dull, maybe, you know, dusty. Like I know for me, if I wear certain shades of like purple, I'm going to look crusty and dusty. <laughs> Other shades will make me look washed out, even sick, to be honest. Whereas something like a green, like most greens, not all greens, but most greens kind of work with my color quite well. Finding those right colors for you or just even avoiding certain colors can make you go from, you know, crusty and dusty to radiant and gorgeous. Are you a spring, an autumn, a summer? Honestly, easier way to do it is literally just to try things on. Either order like a bunch of clothes to your house or go physically into shops and take loads of pictures of you wearing different colors, holding different colors up to yourself. Really get the right kind of shades because the slightest shade difference can make a difference. The other day actually, I went shopping in River Island and I saw this scarf and I thought, it's so great. Like on the outfit that I was wearing on that day, I put the green scarf on and I thought, oh, this looks you know, kind of cute. Then I went home because I wasn't really like too sure about it. Then I ordered the scarf to my house and this is what came. So obviously here, I think I've gotten the wrong scarf. Um, it was a slightly different color than this one, but it's another case of literally the slightest shade difference making a big difference to how I look. The other scarf I thought looked cute, really suited me. This one, I'm not sure. And it also has this little thing here, which I'm not like too much of a fan of either. I think it's especially important, especially for us dark skin girls as well, to really make sure we have the right colors because for some reason, anyone with dark skin, I feel like people seem to just group them together and say, hey, this is your you know, color palette. When actually we are very different, different undertones, different hair colors, different eye colors. And again, it's those slight differences that can change the way a color looks on you. The next thing is incorporating health fats into your diet. I talked in another video about things that you can incorporate into your diet to make your, you know, kind of lifestyle and your meals more healthy. And if you did watch that video, you'll notice that I talked a lot about different kinds of healthy fats. I love Greek yogurt and fatty fish like salmon and avocados. And I think it's really important, especially for us women, for our hormones, for our bodies. I think a lot of people are waking up nowadays, right? But for a long time, people thought that eating fat would make you fat, you know, and people would eat things like, you know, fat free yogurts and fat free this and that when actually I think adding a bit of fat to your meal can make it just more delicious, more filling, more satisfying and I think it makes it less likely for you to snack on junk. Dress in a way that highlights your best assets. Now everyone's going to be less or more comfortable in terms of actually you know showing skin. If you have a small waist not everyone has that. Wear something nice and fitted on your waist you know show it off. If you have great shoulders and nice you know delicate neckline then show that off too. Too. You know, you can wear like a scoop neck, you can wear like a v-neck, maybe something off the shoulders. Now, if you're sitting here watching this video, because I know there's going to be some people who are watching it and thinking, I don't have any assets. Trust me, you do. Everyone has something that someone else wants. But a lot of the time we are so busy looking at our own flaws and looking at the things we want to change about our body that we're not really opening our eyes to the good things that we have. Really try and open your eyes to see the things that are special about you and the things that you know you actually like about yourself and really concentrate on those things. Like for me, I can't tell you how many years I wasted worrying about my stomach, thinking about like, oh, is my stomach gonna be flat today or not? Why don't I have a six pack? Or 
all these other models have six packs or my friends have really great abs when really I should have been looking more at my legs or my arms, realizing those are my best assets and really playing them up and using them. Now, I'm not saying that everyone has to, you know, get your legs out, get your arms out, get your everything out, right? Playing up doesn't always have to mean everything out. Identify your best features, then play them up in a way that makes you feel the most comfortable. And if you still cannot identify your best features, if you're still looking in the mirror thinking, oh my God, I have nothing great, then go to your friends, go to your family, your boyfriend, girlfriend, romantic partner, and ask them what things are attractive about me. What things do I have that make me look beautiful and are special about me? Okay, so I wanna go from body to hair. So let's talk about deep conditioning and co-washing. To me, I think healthy, clean hair is the easiest way to give off a naturally healthy, gorgeous glow. This is especially if you have hair like mine, if you have curly hair, dry hair, hair that's prone to split ends, you especially need to deep condition every week if you can. I know that this is like basic, but honestly, a lot of people don't do the basics. Honestly, I've been there before. I was that girl that was just really obsessed with being product junkie, buying every like cool product, buying every new product, buying every expensive product, and not really focusing on the important thing, which is the routine and doing it regularly. If you buy a bunch of products and you're not really using them regularly, how are you gonna get the benefits from them? You don't need to spend a lot of money if you don't want to, just, you know, whatever product works for you and you enjoy using, Use it. Keeping your hair from drying out is really important and I feel like there's this idea of never washing your hair being the best thing for your hair. There's this perception of the dirtier the better and for some people maybe that works, I mean, whatever works for your hair. But I think in general, in reality, your scalp needs to be somewhat clean. If you use leave-in conditioners, if you use hair moisturizers, oils, that kind of product build up, my scalp is just itching even thinking about it. It's gonna be uncomfortable. If you're scared to like wash your hair too much because you don't want your hair to dry out, use a co-wash. Really the thing that's drying out your hair when you wash it like too much is usually the shampoo. Because the shampoo has kind of like stripping type elements. When it cleans your hair, it's really, you know, clean in the hair. Whereas when you use a co-wash, it's like a cleansing conditioner. So you either just use your own conditioner that you enjoy and you can use that to kind of cleanse your hair or you can buy an actual co-wash. I have a co-wash, it's called Truly Naturals Cleansing Co-wash by Pantene. You can't always find this everywhere, but there are other co-washes as well. I think there's one by As I Am, which is great. But honestly, try first, just using any kind of condition that you like. If that works out, stick to that. If it doesn't, then try a co-wash. So another part of your routine that I think we all know is really important to get down is your skincare routine. But for me, I always found the skincare routine to be something that I hated and something that really changed changed the game for me is changing my skincare routine from something that would be a chore, something I hated doing, something that I was just dreading every night before I went to bed, I would come home and be like, oh, I have to take off my makeup. But I kind of switched this mentality from my skincare routine being a chore to my skincare routine being like kind of like a pampering little routine. You know, stress can make you look tired, sick, depressed, it can make you feel awful. And I think using your skincare routine as like a pampering routine, something that actually is kind of like a little bit of me time for yourself is important. I go to the bathroom, I dim the lights, I play some calming music, I get my cleansing balm and just soak it into my skin. I massage my face, like every little inch of my face. I go from my chin up to my cheeks, all around, up to my forehead, just everywhere. Honestly, it's like I'm giving myself a little facial. I do like, you know, the little circles. I really concentrate on just giving myself this massage and I thoroughly enjoy it. Whereas before I was like, ugh, slapping products on, you know, like roughing up my skin, like being really quick, like I just wanted to get over and done with. And if you're doing that as well, maybe trying to shift to this kind of pampering mindset and that kind of me time kind of mindset will help you unwind Mind, you know like this is the time that I used to unwind look at it this way it's good for your skin because you're actually more likely to do the routine because you enjoy the routine and then on top of that it's good for your mental health your mind you're you're getting ready for bed as well and you're getting into that mood for getting to bed so it even helps you with your sleep taking this time to rejuvenate after a long day is gonna make you look healthier more beautiful the way I will just lay up my skincare on one by one and afterwards I go to sleep looking like a disco ball the way Wake up with a nice, healthy glow. Going for walks. Walking is the easiest, simplest, 
freest form of exercise. And it's so effective, you have no idea. Like honestly, it's gonna make you fitter, it's gonna make your stamina higher, increase your metabolism, make you live longer, better heart health. And it's good for the soul. Like when I go for walks, I put on a podcast, I walk around. Sometimes I don't put on a podcast. Sometimes I walk around and just have a think and just clear my mind. And afterwards when I get home, I just have this clarity, this feeling of accomplishment, this feeling of clarity. And if you do wanna to listen to a podcast, you can put on something on Spotify or Apple Music, whatever you listen to. You can also use YouTube Premium. If you have YouTube Premium, you can put on one of my videos, walk around, listen. Even if you don't have YouTube Premium, I'm sure you can put it in your pocket, like with the video playing and just not even watch. Even if you don't, you know, set aside time, especially to go on your walks, right? You can just walk to work in the morning, walk back home in the evening. Then like, let's say, you know, the walk is, I don't know, half an hour to work, right? That's five hours of walking in a week. Five hours more than you were doing before if you weren't walking to work. So I think that's a win. Get a good hair dryer. This one's for anyone who uses like heat styling tools. Really, I think the goal is to make your hair look as similar to a salon blowout as possible. Like a bouncy, healthy, you know, soft, beautiful blowout look. You don't really want, you know, the fried, overdone, over, you know, blitzed hair. Super flat and super just dry. I have several different styling tools, but there are certain ones that I use for my natural hair and then certain ones that I use for wigs, weaves. And I style that in a way that is more straight but voluminous. And then my hair, my actual natural hair, I style, if I blow it out, I style it more to be more bouncy and big rather than straight. So this is the tool I use. It's called the Revlon One Step Styler and I absolutely love it. It's like got this paddle brush. So I'll take my Demon brush and kind of comb my hair through and then I'll take this and properly use it to blow out my hair. This is the quickest, easiest and best value way that I've used to blow dry my hair. I would also use it if I was going to straighten my hair as well. So I would use this first, really get it properly straight and then use maybe a flat iron afterwards to kind of, you know, get it get it all out. But honestly, I usually just use this if I want my hair to just be big and poofy and gorgeous and fluffy. It's super light, really efficient, and yeah, pretty cheap. The only fault I would say is that I feel like it gets quite hot on the top and not as hot on the bottom. So I think that's a kind of manufacturing fault, but I mean, it still works really well. So these days I'm not really wearing wigs and weaves too much, but if I was going to style my hair, I think the best thing to use is probably the Dyson Airwrap. It is the closest version to a salon blowout that you're ever going to get, in my opinion. If you're styling, you know, wigs, weaves, if you're styling straight hair in general. The version that they have nowadays is so different from the version that they had, you know, a couple years ago. They keep improving and adding attachments and I feel like the new attachments, they make them more forcey hair friendly, they make them more curly girl hair friendly. So someone who's like me and if you wear like your natural hair, plus, you know, you wear wigs and weaves, or you like to straighten and curl and like, you know, style your natural hair. I think the air wrap is gonna be a good shout for you. You can get such a bouncy, flowy, gorgeous look. However, I will say it is quite expensive. So I do think that there are other options that can give you the same look, just as gorgeous, that are not as expensive. I used to use rollers. Rollers are probably the cheapest, cheapest way to do your hair, but they are so great. Better than using like flat irons, you know? There are bendy rollers, are the rollers that you just, you know, shake and then it stays in place. I have heard that there is another version of the Revlon One Step Styler. It is more of like a roller brush type version rather than the paddle brush. And a lot of people use that. I personally have never used it, so I can't really say, but I know that people do use it. Now, get a water filter. Honestly, drinking water is just so important. If you suffer from dry scalp, drink more water. If you have dry skin, drink more water. If you're trying to keep in shape and be more energized, help with your productivity, drink water. And if you struggle drinking water, my best tip is to get a water filter. So I used to have a water filter like on my fridge and you just, you know, put your cup in and it kind of just comes out but then I moved and now I have one of those fridges that look like a normal cabinet and you open it up and then it's a fridge, which is great like aesthetically, but the problem is I don't have the water filter. So I bought this, 
This is like the most basic version of a water filter. That one with the white lid, but there are many other ones. There are like black ones and gray ones and just gorgeous ones, different shapes as well that might fit your fridge differently. It filters the water so it tastes nicer, it keeps it cold, it's more refreshing. The water comes out really nice and smooth. And then every time you open your fridge, right, you see it there. So it's like a reminder drink some water. You have no excuse. You'll realize that you're just suddenly drinking more water. If you like sparkling water and you hate still water, I would definitely get one of those machines. There's a machine that kind of makes the water sparkling. It puts it in this little glass bowl that you keep and it's reusable. So you just reuse it all the time. It tastes amazing and it's just easy. You don't need to go to the shops and buy some. Using hair oils. Hair oils make your hair shinier. They lock in the moisture, keep your hair healthy and they make it grow longer. It's great for dry scalp as well. I put a lot of oil in my front as well, just to give it a massage, make sure, you know, my edges stay intact. So I take a bit of oil before I go to sleep and I put it in the front and kind of massage it. And then I also put it in the back of my head and kind of massage my nape as well. And then in the evening I go to sleep like that and it promotes hair growth. And then in the mornings I wake up, I use oil again, but in a different way. I use it more on the actual ends of my hair, you know, especially because my hair can look quite dry sometimes. And that oil just gives it just a nice, healthy, vibrant shine. I like to use either plain jojoba oil or I use like a more, like an almond oil. I never ever use, you know, oils that are scented, you know, for leave-in type purposes. I feel like I like the option of using a lot of product, right? And if you use loads of product and it's scented, it can just get very overwhelming and you're walking around, you know, smelling like coconut or whatever, you know. Even hair creams, there are some hair creams that people love and swear by, but as soon as I open it and I can just smell it straight away, I don't even use them. Like I don't use Cantu, for example, just because it has a very strong coconut smell. I either use no scent or very, very lightly scented. The only time I use like stronger scents is if it's gonna be like a product that I wash out. So like a deep conditioner, a normal conditioner, a shampoo, I love them to be like super smelly and gorgeous. But then also if I'm using a hair oil that's more like for a hot oil treatment. So if I'm gonna do a hot oil treatment, I use a really thick oil like, you know, the Jamaican castor oil. And that definitely has a very strong smell. Even like they have other like flavors to it, like a mango and lime one and stuff. And the mango and lime smell is even stronger to cover up the, you know, Jamaican castor oil smell. And it's just a lot of scents going on. Another one I love to use, actually, I prefer using this one than the Jamaican castor oil. It's the Mia one. So I use the shampoo for this. And then I also have this oil. I think the reason I just like it better is because it has this pipette and it's just easy to just drag along every bit of your hair and just work it in so far so easy and it's not messy whereas a lot of the time when you use like a hot oil treatment it can get really really messy in the kitchen in the bathroom so i boil some hot water and i take the bottle of the hot oil put it in the hot water and it kind of warms it up and then from there i take the oil squeeze it into my hair my scalp and just leave it on for about 40 minutes well sometimes 40 minutes most of the time maybe 10 minutes actually we don't always have the time to do 40 minutes right but you know at least 10 minutes i think is reasonable if you can do longer even better again i don't use this product to just leave in my hair or leave on my scalp i always kind of wash it out at the end not particularly because the smell is that strong it is quite strong actually you know it, it, it's strong basically it has peppermint oil in it and it has tea tree oil and these are quite I guess irritating fragrances, irritating oils, and I already have quite a sensitive scalp. Anyway, so those are my tips. If you liked the video, like the video, remember to subscribe. And if you really liked the video, there is another one right here that I put on the screen. You can click there and check that video out as well. I'll see you in that video. She's a Mona Lisa.